Focus on your breath. Notice when it's coming in, know when it's going out. And stay with it as it's going in and as it's going out. Don't move around a lot. There may be movements in the mind, but you don't have to move with them. The mind wanders off. You know it wanders off, but you don't have to go with it. You just stay right here with the breath. The breath coming in, the breath going out. Have a sense of what you can control and what you can't control. The fact that the mind is going to churn up thoughts, you can't stop that. But you have the choice of whether you're going to go with those thoughts or not. So you stay right here. And the more constantly you stay here, the more you find the mind can settle down and begin to relax. Find some peace inside. Not be constantly jumping around and running around after things. This is a basic principle that's really important in the practice, developing the mind, trying to find happiness in life, because the world is full of disturbances. And some of the disturbances are outside and some of the disturbances are inside. The ones outside you can't do much about. They're going to be there. So after all, we're f living in a world of a lot of other human beings. The mind of every human being has a lot of disturbances, and they're bound to come out in, in our thoughts and our words and our deeds. So you can't control theirs, but you can control yours. And this is important. You want to find some peace, you have to look inside. And that doesn't mean you go running off to some place where there's nobody else, because you keep running off and there's still one human being right with you right there, and that's you. It's churning up disturbances. You go off and live in the forest, live on a mountaintop, and you can start thinking about all the wrongs that have been done to you over the past how many years. In other words, you're not really alone. You're there with your disturbances. So the real solution doesn't lie in trying to run away. It lies in trying to find some peace inside and learning how to make a distinction. Other people can come and say unskillful things or do unskillful things, but you don't have to respond in an unskillful way. You don't have to get your mind all churned up. As the Buddha said, it's, it's, it's like a broken gong. If someone hits the broken gong, it doesn't make any sound. And people come up and they hit you with their words, with their ideas, with their crazy actions. But you don't have to respond. You don't have to pick up their craziness. You don't have to pick up their disturbance. That's why we train the mind. We start out by being generous, observing the precepts as a way of controlling our more obvious forms of greed and aversion. And we began to see that true happiness doesn't have to depend on getting anything from anyone else. It's that true happiness comes from giving. And this is an important principle. The reason we get involved with other people, we get entangled with them and then get all upset when they don't do what we want is because we want something out of them. But if you begin to realize your true source of happiness lies inside, then you're not so entangled with other people. And so when other people misbehave, you realize, well, that's their, that's their issue. Your issue is what comes out of your thoughts, words, and deeds. And when you learn how to control that, like what you're learning how to do right now, just keep the mind with the breath. If it seems ready to wander off, you bring it back to the breath. Try to breathe in a way that's really, really comfortable. Ask yourself when the mind wandered off, okay, what was it that was uncomfortable about the breath that you had to leave it? Because if the breath is really comfortable, you're not going to go anywhere. It feels really good all through the body. So start exploring that. And as you find that you've got the resources for happiness inside, that's where you're going to find peace. And if each person were to look inside for peace, then the world would be a much more peaceful place. But you can't wait for everybody else to do it before you're going to look for peace inside. You have to start looking on your own. And then hope that your example will set an example for others. And even if it doesn't, at least you know you found the peace. Because you've done what you can. You've learned to control what you can control, and as for things you can't control, you leave them aside. This is a really basic principle, but the Buddha said this is one of the issues that separates wise people from foolish people. Wise people know what's their business and what's other people's business. And so they focus on making sure that their business, i.e. being responsible for thoughts, words, and deeds, gets done properly. As for other people's business, that's their responsibility. Our problem is that we go running around trying to be responsible for everybody else, making sure that they do what we want and say what we want and think what we want. But that doesn't lead anywhere. It's like the story of the, the hungry ghost up in the rafters of the cellar. A group of people come to spend the night at the monastery. They're lined up in a row on the floor of the cellar, sleeping. And the hungry ghost up in the rafters sees them, and he sees that their heads are not in line. doesn't look very, very neat, so he goes down and he straightens them out, pulls them up so all their heads are in line. Then he gets back up in the rafters and he notices that their feet are not in line. So he goes down and he pulls on their feet till their feet are all in line. Then he gets back up, ah, now their heads aren't in line anymore. Keeps this up all night. He doesn't get any rest, they don't get any sleep. This is what happens when you try to mess around with other people's responsibilities and forget your own. So your responsibility is to train your mind. 
so when sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations and ideas come to it, it doesn't have to get stirred up. It can learn how to deal with them responsibly and skillfully. And that way it begins to establish some peace inside. So you don't have to go running off to a mountain or hill someplace or into the forest someplace. You can find peace right where you are by making sure the main source of disturbance, i.e. your own mind, is taken care of.